Shooting the stars or astrophotography is one of the specialist sides to photography. You need a camera that's good at low light capture and the a7 III is reported to be a very good low light camera. Also, your lens needs to be as fast as you can possibly afford. You can definitely get some good images with something like the 24 to 70 or maybe the 28 to 70. If you get out there, have a go and really enjoy doing this, it's worth getting a fast wide prime lens. If you're on a budget, this means the Samyang manual prime lenses. If your budget isn't so tight, you can go for the Zeiss Batis lenses or something like the lower 15 millimeter. And then there's also the Zeiss Loxia lenses. They're also really good. I normally use three different lenses. I have the Samyang 14 mm 2.8, the Zeiss Batis 25 mm f2, and then also the Samyang 24 mm 1.4. The Samyang lenses are relatively cheap, and for the price that I paid for them, I can get some really good images. The Batis 25 mm is incredibly sharp, and I really like it for slightly tighter shots. I focus on wide angle astrophotography. I haven't got into deep space astrophotography yet, because this involves buying a tracker and sometimes a telescope. But this is something I'm interested in and I might get into in the future. But for now, all we're talking about is wide angles, getting shots of the Milky Way and star-filled skies. So these are the steps. Put the a7 III on a tripod. Turn the mode dial to manual. Turn on the self timer to two seconds. Turn off the IBIS. This is the in-body image stabilization. Turn off long exposure noise reduction. Change the file type to raw. Change to uncompressed raw. If you are using a zoom lens, make sure the lens is on the widest angle possible. Switch to manual focus. If you are using a manual focus lens or a Canon lens with the windows on the top showing the infinity point, set your focus to infinity. If you don't, this is the hardest part. Set your ISO to about 10,000, the aperture as wide as possible and your shutter speed to about 6 seconds. Find a bright star that you can see on your display. You might have to turn the brightness of the display up a little bit. Press the magnify button making sure the bright star is in the magnify area. You can use the D-pad on the back to move the magnify square about and press it a second time to magnify more. Now turn your focus ring until you can see the star clearly and in focus. Basically, you want the star to be as small as possible. Keep the focus in manual and try not to touch it. You should check your photos every now and then to make sure they are still in focus. Come out of the magnify mode if you've had to focus using this method. Take the shot. Depending on the moonlight and any ambient light from any cities nearby, your shot might be overexposed. If so, shorten your shutter speed. This first step in having a really high ISO and a relatively fast shutter speed is merely to find a pleasing composition. So ISO high, shutter speed low, take a photo, check the composition. If it's not good, move the camera, take the photo and repeat the process until you find a composition you like. Once you've got a good composition and exposure, Start bringing your ISO down and lengthen your shutter speed. Just don't make your shutter speed too long, otherwise the stars will start to streak in your images. This is basically from the rotation of the Earth. To work out what shutter speed you can shoot at, you need to take your focal length and divide 500 by that focal length. This is known as the 500 rule. With the 500 rule and my 14 millimeter, I would take 500 and divide it by 14. This would give me a maximum shutter speed of 35 seconds. With the 25 millimeter, my maximum shutter speed would be 20 seconds. Depending on your location, the Milky Way will be in different places. At the moment in my location, it starts off in a flat position and by the end of the night, it is vertical. This is due to the earth rotating. It may be completely different depending on your location. There are a couple of apps that you can get to help you work out where the Milky Way is going to be, when the moon is going to rise and set, and when you'll be able to see the Milky Way core. Obviously the weather has to be good and you have to have clear skies, but if you plan around the weather properly and work out when the new moon is, you should be able to get a good shot of the Milky Way. I use an app called Photopills. With it, I can plan my shots properly 
I can work out when the Milky Way is gonna be in the correct position for the shot that I want, and I can work out when the moon is gonna rise and set. So I don't get to a location where the moonlight is bleaching out the Milky Way or the stars. I'm not sponsored by PhotoPills. It is a paid app, but I bought it with my own money and I use it all the time. If we look at the shots this camera has taken, it really does stand up next to the a7R 2 even with the lower megapixel count. And to be honest, unless you're printing massive images, 24 megapixels is more than enough. 